I want to share a couple of thoughts with you just for a few minutes, particularly for those who have been baptised in water and, uh, and all of us who have witnessed it. I, I was thinking about when Jesus started his public ministry, he was 30 years of age when he got baptised in water. And uh, so I started reading Matthew chapter 3, which is the story of uh, Jesus bursting on the scene as a 30-year-old and um, having, getting baptised in water. And it's just interesting that John, John the Baptist, who's his cousin, and John um, was six months older than Jesus, and he was the, the last of the Old Testament prophets. And Jesus called him as a, a great man. And John was terribly abused and he was murdered by King Herod and his uh, uh, wicked wife Herodias and their terrible daughter Salome if you know the story John was persecuted and he was murdered but he he was the one that came and said Jesus is coming the, he's the for, John was the forerunner saying prepare the way for the Lord he is coming and as he's introducing Jesus as part of his message, people are flocking to John and uh, they start confessing their sins. So he's at the River Jordan, Jesus is about to, to come to be baptised by him and people are coming to him confessing their sins and, and, and saying, look, I've done this wrong, I've done that wrong, done that wrong and John, upon their confession, starts to baptise them. And then Jesus turns up and John gets shocked because he says, you want me to, to baptise you? <laughs> no, 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 you're God in human form. I'm not worthy to undo your shoelaces. Uh, no, and, and Jesus said to John, John, it's the right thing to do. Just do it. And uh, for you guys that were baptised today, you have done the right thing. You have followed Jesus' example. Some people say to me, oh, well, you know, like I was done as a baby. And most of, most of the people here get dedicated as babies. I was actually uh, baptised um, in the Greek Orthodox Church and my parents, they, they, they just thought this is the tradition and so the Greeks do it the right way. <laughs> they grab the baby and totally naked, hold it by the Achilles heel and they stick the baby in the water all the way, at once in the name of the Father, second time. In the name of the Son, second time, in the name of the Holy Spirit. I mean, the baby's screaming its head off, you know, like. And then, and then the priest anoints it with oil, lays hands on it, casts out any devil that might try and influence them and prays blessing on them. And, and so my mum and dad, they, they, that was their tradition. And uh, when, I, uh, <laughs> when I was a teenager, I didn't follow Christ. I wasn't a Christ follower. Jesus was a swear word to me. And uh, I was into taking drugs, marijuana and smoking and all kinds of stuff like that. So I was a pagan through and through. So when I came to a place where I personally believed on Jesus and I wanted to get baptised in water, uh, a Greek priest came to visit me and said, but you're already a Christian. The Holy Spirit's in you. We did you as a baby. I said, well, look, I'm thankful my parents did the best they could. I didn't negate it. That, that according to their faith and tradition, great. I said, but... I'm a pagan. No, you're not. You're a Christian. I said, I'm a pagan. And I told him, do you want to tell you what I've been up to? And after I, I spoke a few things, he says, yes, you're a pagan. <laughs> so you may have been done as a baby. You may have been dedicated. Jesus was dedicated at the temple. Mary and, and his human daddy, Joseph, took him to the temple when he was a baby. They dedicated him. But then when Jesus was 30, just before he commenced his earthly ministry, we didn't know much about him. There were no miracles, there was no preaching, there, there was nothing supernatural taking place in the first 30 years. It was when he decided to say, you know what, I'm now going to, to get baptised in water and then the Holy Spirit comes upon him and starts to anoint him where everything changed. And so if you haven't been baptised in water and you might think, well, I've been done as a baby. Well, Jesus was done as a baby. I was done as a baby. As an adult, if you've come to a place where you know him and you understand him, I encourage you to, to be baptised. And, uh, uh, and folks, as 
those of you that have been done. You know, Jesus, when he came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit came on him. So he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so as he's coming to the water, people are confessing their sins. In other words, you know, like, and, and to be a Christ follower, really, we, we have to be confessional. And that means admitting our failings, admitting our mistakes, admitting our sins. How can we be forgiven of sin if we don't admit that we've actually sinned? How can we change if we don't admit where we've made mistakes and, and where we've got failings? And so Jesus comes into that environment as people are confessing. And what's really wild about this is that Jesus is sinless, he's never sinned, and he lines up with all these people who are confessing their sins. I mean, they're confessing, they're weeping, and there's probably a guy at the front saying, yeah, I killed that guy, and someone behind says, I committed adultery, yeah, I stole that. that I... They're confessing their sins as John is preaching, and they, before they get baptized in water, they're confessing, and so Jesus lines up with them. He's never sinned, he is God in human form. Why did he do that? Because he wants to identify with sinful humanity. He wants to identify with our brokenness with our, our sins, our mistakes, though he himself has never sinned. He's saying, I know you, I love you, I've come from heaven as a human being and I'm identifying with you as you're confessing your sins. I'm actually with you and I'm here to help you. And I think it's just a beautiful image of here is the son of God in the midst of hundreds of people that are getting baptized as they're confessing their sins. And then he gets baptized in water and he says, John, it's the right thing to do. So as, as Christ followers, if we're gonna follow his example, we need to be confessional. And uh, I started confessing my sins before I became a Christian. After I became a Christian, I thought I'd, I'd confessed all my sins, but after I became a Christian, like I confessed marijuana, that was illegal, I had to stop that. Swearing, I had to stop that. But after I became a Christian, I found that I'm starting to confess other things. I think, oh, my human weakness, my mistakes, uh, the, the difficulties I'm causing to other people. So I think the Christian life has to be confessional. You can't grow, you can't be forgiven, you can't grow unless you admit your need for growth. And, and also to be obedient. Jesus was obedient to his father. He said it's the right thing to do. And, and you guys that have been baptized today, you've, you've confessed that you've needed Jesus. We heard your confession and you are obeying him. And this is the first step of many steps of obedience. And the Holy Spirit came on Jesus and I pray the Holy Spirit comes on you guys and that you receive the mighty baptism in the Holy Spirit. And, and after Jesus received the Holy Spirit, the heavens opened. Now we don't know what happened. Now where is heaven? Heaven is around about us. But somehow the God the Father peeled back heaven and his voice came out and he just, he couldn't contain himself. For 30 years he's been watching and he said, that's my boy, that's my son. Oh, I love him. I am so pleased with him. It's like as Jesus embraces the confessional community, as he is obedient to his father, as he receives the spirit, as he gets empowered, God the Father couldn't help himself. And I've got this image too. You guys that were baptized, I pray that you will get a vision that God is very, very happy with you. That, that he is saying, you're my boy, you're my girl, I love you, I'm so pleased with you, I'm pleased with your confession, I'm pleased with your obedience, I'm pleased with that you're being empowered to share. God is happy with you and, and, and I, I just got that image and I wanted to say that to you. If you don't have that assurance that God is happy with you, then, then you need that. And he is very happy with you. He is very pleased with you and what you've done today. And it's a message for all of us. And my prayer is for those of us that have witnessed what's taken place, that you will leave this place deeply challenged to say, you know what, maybe I need to to start confessing some of my weaknesses and maybe some of my sins because there's forgiveness and there's grace. God is so, so quick to forgive where we admit and, and to maybe start obeying him. And for some of you, you need to be baptized in water and you're saying, oh, I hadn't thought about this before and uh, I'm an older person now, you know, Jesus was 30. Maybe he's saying you should get baptized in water as well as an, as an act of obedience 
as a step of, the first step of many acts of obedience and to receive the empowerment of the Holy Spirit because you can't live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit helping you. So I trust that, uh, read Matthew 3, and I trust that you will be thoroughly encouraged and blessed by his word. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for uh, the baptisms we've seen today. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus being our model. Thank you for him identifying with sinful humanity, though he himself has never sinned. And he doesn't condemn us, he loves us and wants us to confess our sins, to admit our mistakes and to reach out to you, loving Father, for the grace and forgiveness that comes when we're genuinely contrite. And so, Lord, thank you that Jesus joined a confessional community. Thank you that Jesus was obedient. Help us to be obedient and, and to, to follow you and for baptism being the first step of many steps of obedience and to be empowered by the Holy Spirit and, and to receive the commendation of you that you are pleased with us when we're in Christ and that you love us. I pray, drive this home to each and every one of us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.